Good evening. Welcome to the director's hearing of June 23rd, 2022. I'm Neta Zayer, the hearing officer for this evening. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order at 6.03. Okay, to start the agenda, uh, this is a time for public comment for any item that is not on tonight's agenda. Uh, are there any public speakers tonight wishing to spe speak on an item not on tonight's agenda? I don't have any speaker cards. I do see that we have one member of virtual attendance with their hand raised. I'm not certain if they want to speak to this item, but we might ask them. Please do. Thank you. Oh, they lowered their hand. Hearing no public comments on items not on tonight's agenda, we'll move on to the first item, which is the consent calendar to approve the director hearing minutes of May 26th, uh, 2022. Uh, I will go ahead and approve those minutes as posted and written. Moving to the formal items on tonight's agenda, starting with item number two, which is project 115467. One, um, may we have staff's presentation for this item? Thank you. Item number two on tonight's agenda is project 15467, a request for a use permit for the temporary storage of operable vehicles. Next slide, please. The subject site is located near the Ventura Auto Center at the intersection of Auto Center Drive and Ventura Road in the North Main community within the Olivas Park specific plan. Adjacent properties contain light industrial uses such as personal self-storage and commercial retail uses such as sales of manufactured sheds. The subject site was previously utilized for the storage of automobiles by the applicant until 2018, which was an allowed use by right at the time. Next slide, please. With the adoption of the Olivas Park specific plan in 2019, vehicle storage is no longer a use allowed by right, but requires a use permit. Accordingly, the applicant, Globus America Inc., is requesting a use permit to utilize the site once again for vehicle storage on approximately 21 acres. The operable vehicles would be temporarily stored on the site until they can be routed for distribution to their ultimate destination. Next slide, please. Overall, the proposed project would be appropriately conditioned in order to minimize impacts upon the general public and adjacent uses. Staff recommends approval of the use permit as conditioned. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. Uh, I just have one question. Um, this indicates it's for a temporary vehicle storage. How long is the term of this use permit? The term of the use permit is currently for three years with the option to request renewal. And the option for renewal would be at a, another hearing or would that be a staff level approval? They would be required to come back for another hearing with that okay. request. Thank you. Right, that's all my questions. Is the applicant present? Would they like to make a presentation or statement? And if the applicant is attending virtually, you can use the raise hand function or identify yourself in the chat. Not seeing anyone here in the chambers and no one has identified themselves. Okay. Are there any members of the public who'd like to speak on this item? Seeing none, anyone virtually who would like to speak on this item? There are no speakers. Okay. Given that, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, understand that this site is for temporary use of vehicle storage and was previously used in that fashion, and, and the intent is to use it for vehicle storage until it is developed. 
Uh, given that, I have read the resolution, the staff report, and viewed the, the project plans and agree with staff's recommendation to approve the use permit. Um, and so I do so. Moving on to item number three, uh, which is project 15459 for agave cocktails alcohol use permit at 79 South Oak Street. Can we have staff's presentation? Yes, thank you. Good evening. The next project on the agenda is an alcohol use permit for agave cocktails. The subject site is located at 79 South Oak Street at the corner of Oak Street in Santa Clara in the downtown specific plan area, urban core. The tenant space is approximately 2,050 uh, 2, square feet um, with a new restaurant proposed. The alcohol use permit uh, request is for a type 47 beer, wine, and distilled spirits license. The hours of operation will be from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. Um, in addition, the P Ventura Police Department reviewed the application and also recommends an approval of the alcohol use permit. With that, staff recommends to approve the alcohol use permit as conditioned. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so this alcohol use permit is in conjunction with a restaurant, is that correct? That's correct. And they would only be serving alcohol with the service of food? That's correct. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, is the applicant here and would they like to speak on the item? We're here, we prefer not to speak unless um, we need to. Okay, great. Are there any members of the public who'd like to speak on this item? Mr. McDonald, anyone online who would like to? No public speakers identified. Okay, and none here at the chambers. So I'll go ahead and close the public hearing on this item. I did read the one public comment that was provided and attached with the packet from a, a resident that lives on the upper floors of this tenant space. And their comments were in regards to not wanting a bar um, use below them. Um, and my understanding is that this isn't a bar, that this is a restaurant, as staff has indicated, and the service of alcohol would be with the restaurant. Uh, restaurants are a permitted use in the downtown specific plan in, in this zone. Is that correct, Ms. Peltier? That's correct. So given that, they, we wouldn't be able to deny a restaurant going into this location, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so the use permit before us this evening is just to serve alcohol with that restaurant use, and since it's allowed uh, there by right, we would not be able to deny a restaurant going in there. And understand the um, tenant's concerns with noise, but uh, being a mixed-use building, there is that mix of uses that does require um, understanding that there are shared uses in the same building. So given that, I uh, and the support from the police department on this alcohol use permit and the findings and conditions that have been drafted, I will approve the use permit as, as proposed and presented in the packet. Thank you. Given that, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Uh, item number uh, four, which is project 15465 for Asia Teak alcohol use permit at one, or 546 East Main Street. Can we have staff's presentation, please? Thank you, Ms. Sayer. The next item on the agenda is a request for an alcohol use permit for a type 41 alcohol license at an existing 3,200 square foot restaurant. Next slide, please. The project site is an existing 3,200 square foot commercial tenant space, which is located at 546 East Main Street and is currently occupied by an existing restaurant. The subject site is surrounded entirely by commercial uses, including other restaurants and various retail uses. Next slide, please. As noted in the staff report, the applicant is requesting approval for an on-site sale and of beer and wine license that would uh, be used during the hours of 11 a.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. daily. Alcohol service is not intended to be the main focus of the restaurant, but an added amenity to patrons visiting the establishment. The Ventura Police Department has reviewed the request and has recommended approval. 
Next slide, please. With that, staff recommends approval of the alcohol use permit as conditioned. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Is the applicant present? Would they like to make any comment? Hearing none, Mr. McDonald, no one online indicated that they're the applicant. I don't see anyone. And just as a reminder, if you are an applicant, you can raise your hand or use the chat function. Thank you. Any, is there any member of the public who'd like to provide public comment on this item? No one online either, Mr. McDonald, for public comment? No virtual public comment. Okay, seeing none in the chambers, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing on this item. Seeing as uh, Ventura Police Department and city staff recommend approval, I've read the staff report and resolution and um, agree with staff's recommendation to approve the alcohol use permit as conditioned. Thank you. Moving on to item uh, number five, project 15463. Um, for an alcohol use permit at 4960 Telephone Road. Yes, the next item on the agenda is for request for an alcohol use permit for a Type 41 alcohol license at, an, at a proposed restaurant. Next slide, please. The project site is an existing 2,600 square foot commercial tenant space located at 4960 Telephone Road and is proposed to be occupied by a new restaurant. The subject tenant space is located within a large commercial shopping center that contains several other restaurants and general retail uses. Next slide, please. As noted in the staff report, the applicant is requesting approval for on-site sale of beer and wine during the hours of 11 o'clock a.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. daily. The Ventura Police Department has reviewed the request and has recommended approval. Next slide, please. With that, staff recommends approval of the alcohol use permit as conditioned. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Is the applicant present and would they like to make any comments? Uh, hearing none, uh, is there any members of the public that would wish, would wish to comment on this project? Anyone online, Mr. McDonald, wishing to comment? No public speakers. Thank you. Given that, close the public hearing and um, similarly to the last items, the, the Ventura Police Department and city staff support this alcohol use permit. I've reviewed the staff report, the resolution, and the conditions of approval, and agree with staff's recommendation and approve as conditioned. Thank you. Moving on to item number six on the agenda, Project 15427 for a sidewalk on Harbor uh, Boulevard. May we, may we please have staff's presentation? Thank you. This project consists of requests for an administrative coastal development permit for the construction of a new sidewalk on the north side of Harbor Boulevard between San Juan Road and Vista Del Mar Drive within the public right of way. Next slide, please. Residents and visitors to this area have expressed concern that there's currently no sidewalk for pedestrians to walk safely from to the beach from Vista Del Mar Drive. The closest pedestrian crossing is located 500 feet to the north at Harbor Boulevard and San Juan Road. Next slide, please. The Public Works Department is proposing an informal capital improvement project to add sidewalk on the north side of Harbor Boulevard between San Juan Road and Vista Del Mar Drive to create a safe pedestrian way to, to access the beach. Next slide, please. The sidewalk will be seven feet in width and results in a decrease in the width of the westbound travel lane of Harbor Boulevard in some areas. Next slide, please. The sidewalks, uh, sidewalks are recognized, are recognized part of the right of way and are necessary and permitted according to the zoning and the comprehensive plan and do not conflict in any way with the coastal access or recreation policies. Next slide. Staff is recommending the director approve the administrative coastal development permit as conditioned. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is the applicant here? And would you like to make any comment? I believe they will. Are. Um, Greg Newson right. from the uh, Public Works Engineering Design and Construction Manager. And I have no comments or additions at this point, but I'm available for questions. Thank you so much. 
Is there any member of the public who would like to make public comment on this item? Anybody online, Mr. McDonald? I do see that we have a hand raised. I will go ahead and uh, and unmute them. I'm not certain if they're an applicant or. Hey, Luis, you should be able to unmute yourself. And again, if you have any questions, I'm available to answer some of them as well. Thank you. Thank you. So. I uh, see no public comment on this item. I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. I did uh, review the public comments that were provided in the supplemental packets um, with some of the concerns regarding um, the project and some um, support for the project as well. I uh, believe that the installation of the sidewalk meets the goals and the objectives of the general plan as well as the goals and objectives of the Coastal Commission to provide safe access to the beach. And therefore, I believe it's in line with our regulations. I've read the resolution and reviewed the project plans and support the project as condition. Given that, approve the administrative coastal development permit um, as condition. Thank you. Moving on to item number seven, project 15473 for Black Bear Diner, alcohol use permit at 2401 Harbor Boulevard. May we have staff's presentation, please. Thank you and good evening. Agenda, agenda number seven for this evening is project 15473, which is a request for an alcohol use permit for an existing restaurant with a patio located at 2401 East Harbor Boulevard. Next slide, please. Subject property is currently used by Black Bear Diner, which is an existing restaurant. The applicant is requesting a Type 41 ABC license for beer and wine sales at an eating place. Hours of operation would be 6 to 9 p 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Sunday through Thursday and 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. The surrounding uses are commercial use. Next slide, please. The use would primarily be a restaurant with alcohol sales being a secondary use to the restaurant. There are no exterior alterations proposed and conditions would be compatible. Next slide, please. Therefore, staff recommends that the director approves the alcohol use permit as conditioned. Thank you. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Would they like to make any comment? Looks like I do have one hand raised virtually. I'll go ahead and unmute Savina. Uh, my name is Lisa, and I'm here from the Elite Diners team. I don't have any comments, but definitely here for any questions. Thank you. Are there any members of the public who'd like to make public comment on this item? No, seeing none, I will go ahead and close the public hearing on this item. Uh, reviewed the staff report and resolution with the conditions included. Um, see that the Ventura Police Department and city staff support the alcohol use permit as proposed. Um, therefore, I um, agree with staff's recommendation and approve the alcohol use permit as condition. Thank you. We'll move on to item number eight, project 15468 for coastal storage for a variance and minor change at 4451 Market Street. Thank you, yes. Ms. Sayer. Go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Sayer. Uh, the current item on the agenda is a request for a minor variance and minor change to permit an eight foot tall metal fence. The project site is located near the northeast corner of Telephone Road and Market Street in the Arundo community as shown on the screen by this vacant parcel highlighted in red. Next. Last spring, the Planning Commission approved the plan development permit for a four story, 60,000 plus square foot personal storage building on a one acre property uh, that was approved with a six foot tall CME block wall around the perimeter. Next. This request proposes to replace that previously approved six foot tall CME block wall with a metal fence uh, for a maximum height of eight feet. And this metal fence is proposed to have vines located all throughout. Uh, the fence all along the perimeter as well. The minor change uh, is to actually replace the block wall and the variance is for height. Next. 
The site is located in the Manufacturing Plan Development Zoning District, which permits a maximum fence height of six feet. Now, this request proposes to exceed that maximum permitted height by two feet. Next. The proposed metal fence will provide additional landscaping to the site in the form of the vines located along the northeast and west site boundaries. Metal fencing uh, at this site along the perimeter will open up the site visually and also provide sufficient security for site users. Uh, given the previously approved building is for four stories within 48 feet in height, an eight foot tall metal fence seems appropriate given the fact that it will be proportionate in scale and provide sufficient security at the site. The proposed metal fence with vines is of an appropriate height and material given the height of the building. Next. Given the aforementioned, staff recommends to the director approve the minor variance and minor change as condition. Thank you. Thus concludes staff's presentation. Thank you, Mr. Burse. Um, do you happen to know why the applicant chose to make um, the switch to in, in heightened material between its original approval and now? The applicant, who I believe may be on the line, could speak better to that. Okay. But uh, to my understanding, uh, the proposed material would be more consistent with the design uh, as well as, as as an opportunity to have additional uh, landscaping, if I answered your question, if I understood your question correctly. Okay. And is the gate, the, um, my understanding is this project is gated as well in terms of vehicle access. Is the vehicle gates along the frontage going to be raised to eight feet as well? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Purse. Uh, is the applicant present and would they like to make any comments? Mr. McDonald, anyone indicating they're the applicant? I don't see anyone. Okay. Are there any members of the public who'd like to make public comment on this item? Anyone online as well, Mr. McDonald? Uh, no public comment. Given that, I will go ahead and close the public hearing on this item. I ag agree, given the height and the scale of the building, increasing uh, the height of the fence by two feet uh, is, is appropriate. Also agree that um, instead of doing an eight foot block wall that may um, seem more like more of a barrier, having the wrought iron that also has landscape may soften the appearance of that fencing and provide a green screen for the adjacent properties as well as along the street frontage. Uh, given that, I am in, in also uh, supporting of staff's recommendation to approve the minor variance and the minor change as drafted and conditioned. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the next item on tonight's agenda. Uh, item number nine, project 15438 for the Church of Scientology. I see here on the staff report that staff is requesting to continue this item until the July 28th director's hearing. Is that correct? That is correct. Given that, I will continue this item to the July 28th, uh, 2022 director's hearing to be heard at such time. Moving on to the next item on the agenda, item number 10. This is project 15157 for Burns residents, variants located at 304 North Brett Street. Here we have staff's presentation. Thank you and good evening. Agenda item number 10 is project 15157, which is a request for a minor variance for existing single family residence located at 305 North Brent Street. Next slide, please. The project site is located within the Midtown Community Plan area. The site is located by the, uh, by the lot zone for a single family residence. The applicant is requesting a minor variance to exceed maximum lot coverage uh, and to encroach into the front yard setback. Next slide, please. Constructed in 1939, the project site has one story high, approximately 1,000 square feet residence with attached and closed sunroom and two car garage. 
the existing single family residence is non conforming as portion of a, a existing patio and dining room encroaches two feet seven inches into the front yard, front setback area. In addition, the, pro the project has previously received a variance approval for a reduction of side yard setback from five feet to four feet and to reduce distance between the accessory structure and main building to eight feet. Next slide, please. The proposed structure, uh, pro sorry, the proposed project includes uh, interior remodel of existing residence, conversion of sunroom to master bedroom, and a new roof deck above master bedroom with exterior metal st stairway. The rooftop deck is proposed on top of the existing sunroom footprint and will maintain the distance of the existing side yard setbacks as they have existed on site. The maximum lot coverage for R1 zone is 35%. With this variance request, the project will exceed the allowed lot coverage by 2.8%, and the proposed addition towards the front would result in expansion of the existing nonconformity. Next slide, please. Here are uh, elevation showing the additions to the residence. Um, next slide, please. To conclude, this project site is a uniform rectangular lot that doesn't appear to have any unique or challenging hardships. With these two additional variance requests, the total number of variances for this uniform lot with no apparent hardship would now be four, which is uncommon for such lots and inconsistent with the surrounding area. Therefore, approval of this variance would grant a special privilege. Staff believes a more functional livable area can be achieved by internal home redesigning without increasing the lot coverage beyond the required 35%. Next slide, please. Due to the project's inconsistency with the rezoning requirements, the staff is unable to make all the required variance findings and therefore staff recommends denial of the minor variance request. This concludes staff presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Is the applicant here and would they like to provide any comment? Good evening. Um, okay, I do have some slides I believe loaded in. Fantastic. Okay. And the clock's running. Okay. So thank you for hearing. Um, next slide, please. My support of application. I'm just going to talk you through what we're looking to do. And then I tried to address all of the criteria that I'd seen in previously approved uh, similar uh, developments in our neighborhood. Uh, next slide, please. So what we're looking to do. Next slide, please. Um, we want, as you, you've just heard, remove the existing 400 square foot covered patio that was permitted back in the 80s um, before we, we were any, anywhere near the house. Um, we want to add uh, an actu actually what's a smaller addition to the rear of the house, but that we, we then would like to add to the side of the house in order to widen the existing kitchen, uh, dining room, homework room. Um, and give us a working family kitchen and dining room. Um, we also, to kind of maximize outdoor space, wanted to add a roof deck onto the single story master bedroom. Um, we would um, maintain access to the garage with a 10 foot driveway. We've had that reviewed by the traffic department and they gave that the thumbs up, said it was good to go. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so why are we doing it? We moved down there from downtown in 2015. Uh, my kids, who I unfortunately have had to bring with me tonight, um, uh, are starting to really outgrow their space. And we literally are trying to uh, accommodate three bedrooms for a family of five. Um, if we could, we would trade up. But clearly, uh, property market now makes that really difficult. So to get a house of that size, um, we feel like this is the best way to, to move. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is the variance that, we, that we were asking for. 2.8% um, above the permissible 35% um, and two foot seven inches encroachment into the required front yard setback. Um, I wanted to point out that um, I think if we go to the next slide, um, this encroachment uh, is, is, is an as-built encroachment. You can see the line there, the front of all the properties on our street and most streets in that neighborhood um, encroach into uh, that uh, required setback. Um, we did talk to staff about that circle in the 
in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see that's the corner that encroaches. Uh, we did ask if it would make any difference to, um, uh, to take that away, and we were told that uh, it wasn't about the number of nonconformities. Um, so we, we, we left that in there. Um, it does make uh, for a uniform side to the house, and actually the effect on the front of the house would I'll show you in a moment. So um, I just wanted to point that out. Um, this, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, is it appropriate for the neighborhood? Uh, well, it will remain a single family house in a single family neighborhood. We're not ex expecting to um, add any additional uh, residents to the house or anything like that. Um, and so it will, for all intents and purposes, look very similar to how it does right now and fit right in with the neighborhood. Next slide, please. Uh, consistency, uh, next slide, please. Um, so I wanted to show you that, that where we're building, so you can see the patio room and the orange shaded area is just showing you where we're looking to build. So it's a very small addition to the house, but it provides us with a lot of functional space that we don't currently have. Um, what we would result in is, is having three bedrooms um, and, and, and an additional bathroom, which um, is, is fairly uh, essential for a family of five. If you look on the photograph, that's kind of the area where you see the red brick line. That's pretty much where the addition is going to come to. So it really doesn't affect the scale in any, in any uh, significant way. And the house would look very similar to properties in, in the neighborhood. If you move to the next slide, um, this is from the front. So the effect would be where you see the, the kind of faux shutter and the gate. Um, e expanding that out by uh, a, a small amount um, and obviously changing the window configuration and, and the, the roof um, in order to get that extra width. But as you go back along that south side of the house, of course, that addition adds several feet to the kitchen, several feet to the laundry room and becomes a significant addition for internal space. Uh, next slide, please. And then these are just some examples. Um, on our own street, this is one where the side, uh, a similar side addition has happened. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is a similar configuration of house with, you can kind of get the idea of the scale of the wider front. Um, next slide, please. Uh, same example again. And the next slide, please. Another example of where the, the, the side has been um, added on and, and, and widened. So I just wanted to demonstrate that this is very much in keeping with the scale of every house that you will see in that neighborhood. Next slide, please. Will it adversely affect adjacent properties? Um, absolutely not. Uh, we have a block wall separating the south side as well as you know, 15 feet um, of space. We have added some pitches on the recommendation of staff to make the side look more attractive um, and a, a faux uh, kind of privacy wall on, uh, on, on the roof deck. Um, and then we have mature shrubs on the rear and the north side of the property, which kind of provide a screen, an actual screen. Um, so we, 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 while we, we uh, believe that we have the support of our neighbors, we don't expect this to affect them other than you know, a, a more attractive um, house that's better maintained. Next slide, please. Uh, does this con constitute a special privilege? And this seems to be the, the, the biggest uh, talking point in the staff report. So uh, they point out that, you know, variances are unusual for a uniform rectangular lot. I think if you look at the vicinity map, every single lot in that neighborhood is almost without fail, flat and rectangular but there are dozens upon dozens of approved variances. Uh, staff found 15 plus in, uh, within a 500 feet area, uh, but there are significantly more in a, in, a, in a slightly wider radius. We were inspired to do this by a variance almost identical in our own street. Um, that was what gave us the idea of, of pursuing a variance to get what we felt that we needed. Um, and you can see that the variance is around, you know, up to 42% uh, lot coverage, um, up to 10 feet into the front um, uh, setbacks. Is th 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 they're not uncommon. Um, next slide. This is this is a list. I have the staff report. I have my own notes and the staff reports that go with those individual 
items if they were of interest. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and the final thing is just, would this be based on economic hardship? Well, we're taking a property that we bought in a relatively rundown state, and we've lived with that rundown for several years. We've been working on this, this uh, design since 2019. Uh, it's taken a long time to get through this process. Um, but you know, we've invested money in it already. We will invest more money to make it a really fine property that will sit nicely in the neighborhood. And so no, this is not based on economic hardship in any way. Uh, and I think next slide, just to say thank you all for listening to me. Thank you for the attention I've had from Falak and the team. And, and you know, um, I, I, I'd love to uh, hear your perspective on this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there any members of the public who'd like to speak on this item? Anyone online, Mr. McDonald? No public comment. Would you like to sp speak, sir? Yeah, if you could hand Mr. McDonald your speaker slip. That's fine. Go ahead and speak, and if you could just fill out a speaker slip after, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My name is Angie Burns, and I live at 305 North Brent Street. I hope that you can approve the design my parents have worked hard on. It will allow us to be in the kitchen more than one at a time, give us a place to eat as a family, and even have friends over. But most of all, we'll give our sister her own room. My brother and I need our own space. We're growing and we're running out of room. My mom has great taste and I know the house will be a compliment to our neighborhood. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Are there any other members who'd like to speak on this item? No, anyone online, Mr. McDonald? No public comment. Okay. Given that, I will close the public hearing on this item. I have read the staff report as well as um, the findings and looked at the plans that are being proposed um, and appreciate the time that you've taken to come and provide your perspective as well, um, uh, Mr. Burns, on this item. Um, I understand staff's perspective in that they, looking at the site and looking at the findings, uh, there seems to be um, ample room to be able to address the expansion and conversion and addition needed to accommodate the desires to increase the square footage uh, given the amount of area on site and within the existing regulations. I understand Mr. Burns' perspective in looking at the site that the addition is mainly in the rear of the house. It's not impacting the adjacent properties in the sense that the addition will be in the rear yard and a minor addition on the side yard that expands onto the side that has um, the larger setback area. And so the four foot setback area that's had a previous variance is not being uh, increased, but there is a s small corner in the front yard setback that's being increased. Even with that increase, there's still a 19-foot setback in the front yard. And so um, looking at, I think, what would be the primary concern here of the impacts to the adjacent properties, I believe that they would be minimal uh, in that they are keeping a one-story character to the home that's fitting with the character of the neighborhood. I appreciate, Mr. Burns, that you've taken staff's request to adjust your design to add character and, and continue to enhance the design of the home. We appreciate that. Uh, given that, I'm inclined to approve this variance, um, but I do make a request, Mr. Burns, that in the future, if you do additions or additional modifications, Please work with your design team in adhering to the regulations of the zoning code. They have been put in place.
by our city count, previous city councils and community and what they'd like to see in their single family neighborhoods and in the city. And we'd like to do the best to, to respect those regulations as much as we possibly can. Uh, giving in that, I'd like to adjust two of the findings to be able to meet them, and I believe the adjustments would need to be to findings one and four um, about the project uh, authorized by the variance consistent with the policies and provisions of the general plan and requirements of the zoning ordinance. Although there is a uh, request for deviation from the front yard setback and the lot coverage, uh, I believe that uh, it still meets the intent of the zoning ordinance in our general plan and allowing um, space between structures and adjacent properties to provide air, light, and space, which can still be made, as well as enough front yard setback to provide um, separation from the front yard and the structure from the sidewalk, and therefore I believe um, meets the intent of those um, ideas that are presented in our zoning ordinance and general plan. For uh, number four, the approval of the variance does not grant a special privilege inconsistent with the limitations on other properties in the same vicinity or zone. I um, think the proposed project is in keeping with the character of the neighborhood, keeping a one-story um, uh, form and mass and generally meets the setbacks and heights. The uh, modification to the setback is minor and it still provides at least a 10 foot setback to the adjacent property, giving um, space room and access for fire um, to the, the residents if needed. Given that, uh, with those adjustments to the findings, I uh, will approve the requested minor variance for this project. Thank you, Mr. Burns. That is the last item on tonight's agenda. Um, moving on to staff communications. Are there any communications from staff? None at this time. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Given that, I call the meeting to adjournment, the June 23rd director's hearing at 6.44 p.m. Thank you all.